What's up guys, live here at Pro Play Games with Peter Katani and he's back with another Tournament of Power invention. What what did you go, what universe did you decide to side with this Eleven. time? 11 because they got your boy Jiren. And for one event they called me Jiren, so that was kind of fun. Um, so I just went with it. Uh, I like the whole leader thing because it had like kind of a Ginyu Force concept to it where it's a team and I love that kind of stuff. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna get into the deck. So this is the deck. Um, your main leader is Jiren. I believe he's the only Universe 11 leader we have at the moment. Uh, his ability is that when he swings, you get to draw a card. When you awaken, you untap, uh, you put two energies active, which at first we all thought here in PBG that it was whatever because drawing two cards just seemed beneficial, but this is actually becoming our favorite thing because even when we're tapped out and we're awakened, we can still survive a turn. We do like this ability now. When he's awakened, he, when he attacks, draws a card, awesome. And at the end of the turn, you can pick two Universe 11s and put them active, which is huge actually. So it has kind of like Galactic Freezes feel to it. So they could have done more because it's Jiren, but it is what it is right now. This is foil, so we're all happy with it. But um, yeah, let me explain how the deck works. We only put Tournament of Power cards into the deck for a battle series. That was kind of the gimmick we were going with. There's things that you can change around some cards that are not worth being in, but we just wanted to make it as consistent as it could be with Tournament of Power. The negate that we use is this one. Um, could it be Nimbus? Yes. Do I like Nimbus over this? I don't know. This negate can only be used with Jiren because you have to have a Universe 11 leader and you negate an attack and pick one of their battle cards and rest it. So it almost counts like two negates. Like if they have a bomb, you can negate the leader's attack and then tap the bomb. That's, this is a really good negate. I don't know which one I'll play over. Our super combo is Universe 11, only works with that. Um, but you're able to use it uh, from five life and lower. You gain 10,000 and draw a card. A lot of people are questioning if this is even worth it. I love it uh, because sometimes some, some players will stop you at five and they'll swing with double strike putting you at three or triple strike, which is huge, and leaving you at two so double strikes will hit you in. I'm a big fan of these super combos now, but they're only working, they only work for universal cards. So universe 11, we're gonna make use of it. Is a shoe guest strong? No, but we're not playing shoe guest combo in this because we want to stick to Universe 11. The one drop is like, he checks the top three cards and grabs any Universe 11 and adds it to the hand. So Gowasa was the name I was looking for. Um, he plays just like that, awesome leader for a one drop and later on when I show you the bomb, it's nice to have one drops because it counts for later. This guy, I definitely would take out. I see no point of him. He was Universe 11, so we were able to grab him with him, but I would probably cut him out for anything else. Um, his ability is Barrier, so Barrier automatically is good. And his permanent is you have two Universe 11 creatures on the board. He gains Double Strike and 5k, so he's 20k, uh, he's 20k with Double Strike. It's good, but I don't think it's necessary for a deck. For a three drop also, it's not necessary. I would cut him out and I don't know what I would replace him with. Maybe a better yellow or something. And we want to make it consistent, but again, not necessary. He was only energy for the battle series. This guy ain't bad because he's our self-harm card. He's universe 11 and active main once per turn. I can pick up a life from my, my life area, add it to my hand and rest one creature from my opponent's side of the board, and I believe it's four or less. Perfect. Um, but again, he's universe 11 and helps me awaken if they try to lock me. So I do like him, even though I never had to use him because we were both going aggressive. This lizard isn't bad. It um, conflicts with our leader since at the end of the turn we can untap two. He has that same ability. If you have a universe 11 battle card other than him, he gains 5,000, so he swings for 15. At the end of the turn, he goes to active. So he's like Ginyu Force Bircher. Really good, but it doesn't make sense too much. But consistent, so we grab it with the one drop. It, sometimes it comes into play. This two drop, he's five drop, he's a blocker, but he's interesting, he's different from everyone else. Uh, his permanent is if I control a Universe 11 card other than him, he survives from being Kato one battle. Not from effects, so you can bear him, you can remove him no matter what from like effects. But in battle, if I use him for block, he stays alive. So you have to attack it again to kill it, which is huge. Um, 
a, a, if you don't waste an attack to try to kill it, next turn it's going to be right back, stand up, and it's going to block it and attack again. I'm a big fan of this card. The man himself, Jiren. He's really good because Universe 11, we can pick it off with this. All of them are Universe 11, but important, the main guy. His ability is when you play him, you can discard one yellow card, any yellow, yellow card. It doesn't have to be a battle card, it can be an event. And KO two rested creatures. So like Mecha Freezer, the four drop, he doesn't get double strike, but he's a turn earlier and pretty effective. I like this card a lot. This guy, we do not know his name at all. Uh, we don't know where he was from the show. I think his hands are getting ripped off. I'm sure he's shooting a gun, but in my eyes, he, he was going through a battle. Um, this guy is incredible. So far, maybe my favorite card of the deck. He's dual attack, which to me is better than double strike because most of the time I don't want to give my opponent two cards in hand. I like to attack like tap creatures, so 20, 20, make them waste cards. Love it, but his ability is out of this world. If you have a universe 11 leader, you choose one of your opponent's rested energies and it stays rested till my turn. Uh, right now we were questioning the ruling where these leaders are able to put active energies. Since this says it stays rested till my turn, we think it stops this, like it's not gonna work, but we need to find out the ruling on that. Other than that, this guy sets people behind. Like if I go first, my turn four, I put them back to only three mana, which turn fours are the big, uh, big drops. Huge fan of this one. I think it's the best card of Universe 11. The rabbits are combo, where if we use him for combo, he comes in rested. And that's just huge. It adds more Universe 11 on the board for our bomb at the end. I'm going to show you that soon, but a huge fan of these cards. Great against aggro, and these cards are just really good. Again, we were sticking to Tournament of Power cards. These cards I would take out completely. I just added it because it was yellow. I love the ability. And in case my uh, opponent didn't swing at me and try to lock me, it can take two life. Did it ever come into play? No, but it was great energy, so we're okay with that. Topo, second best card in the deck, like I'm still gonna give it to this guy first, but this one deserves a spot also, because when you play it and your leader is Universe 11, so Jiren, you check top 10 cards of your deck and pick two Universe 11 and play them rested, but they have to be three drop or lower, so you can't get a four drop like another Topo and do it again. What? Uh, so they try to balance the game, so it's three or lower. That's why we play so many Universe 11, so we can hit really well and just get more creatures. And with more creatures, we can actually play our bomb for cheap. This Jiren, he is gorgeous, um, but he's costly. He's pretty heavy. Uh, he's quadruple strike, so when he hits, he takes four energy, so that's good. They did justice for him, not the leader, but that's okay. He has a permanent where for each Universe 11 card on the battlefield, um, he gets to be reduced by that many. So if I have, 10 universe 11 he's a zero cost but you have to pay the pacific cost which is five yellow so the cheapest you can make him is a five drop which is okay it's not bad his ability is when he comes into play you destroy all rested cards on your opponent's side that's the battle cards and their energy which is huge if they do a big play and you survive you play this card you wipe out their energy and any card that wipes out energy it's automatically good so big fan of this it's theoretically only a five drop if you have a bunch of creatures and that's the goal of this deck to have a bunch of creatures on the board survive the board wipe and then play this big fan of this card so after this month of battle series we're gonna play competitive decks right now we're just having fun with all these new leaders and trying out all the cards to see what they do this deck i think would benefit with crusher ball because putting something in tap when they drop a bomb and playing the three drop jiren just popping it would be really sufficient. Um, but yeah, I got to toy around what it is. I do love the concept of it, though. I do love how it's a team effort, and I wish I played this in the battle series. I'm sorry, guys, but next time, soon, soon, something's going to happen. But yeah, um, just waiting for the next battle series, and I'll see you guys next time.